Well, just shoot me now, man. So, the most basic thing is, uh, guys, of course, drawing an entire function in three dimensions is going to be harder than this, but even just graphing a point is troublesome in 3D. Uh, so, one quick thing you could do for yourself is to, uh, first of all, make sure your tick marks are parallel to the, the actual uh, plane that they're in. So it makes sense what I just said? I don't know if you guys are with me on what I'm saying. Alright. So if I want to graph the point, uh, uh, what you got, Jeff? Let me put this down here first. X, Y, Z, let's say 2, uh, 3, uh, no, Jeff, don't go crazy. 2, 3, 4, yeah, let's start with that one. Here's one little hint. The, the one dimension we are not as used to, and I know all the dimensions are a little freaky, is the, the Z, the, the up and down. So uh, a really smart way to do this is to start with 4. Now I want to go how far in the X direction? In the X direction? 2. two. So I want to go 2 in the X direction, so I go 2 over. And then I want to go how far in the Y direction? Three, I like it. So then you would go in the y direction, you would go three. So let me see if I can say this. So you're gonna start at four, I'm up here. Then I wanna go two in the x direction, and then three in the y direction, right? So if you try to, let's see, if you try to do this, two, and then three, where, where it gets a little freaky is when you try to go four in the z direction, you don't wanna go all the way up here. That's the problem, right? So if you gotta start at, at this point, then you'll kind of naturally, so I want to go two in the, parallel to the x-axis, two in that direction, and then parallel to the y-axis, I want to go three, and now you can kind of see where you are. So I want to go three, one, two, three. So it's going to be about right there, roughly. All right, let me do it again. And, and you just have to be, you can sort of do the same thing I just did here. You can go two, three, that was easy. Now compare, now notice where you are on the z-axis currently. And you want to go four up. You don't want to go to the fourth spot. You actually want to go four up from where you are. So it would roughly be one, two, three, four, like right there. I like it. I think I have two different spots, but oh, well, too bad for me. <laughs> yes? What I like to do is say the first octet, I'll make it bigger. Pick a, oh, make it bigger. Yeah. It's always an option is to make your dot really big. <laughs> Oh, I see. You give us a perspective. I got you. Oh, that's even cooler. So, like, this would be, like, right here. Wow. I got you. All right. Someday we'll do, like, the 3D glass thing. Dots, like, right on my face. Okay. All right. Maybe that helped. I don't know. You, you just have to put some effort in. I mean, at least put some effort in. Some of you guys are giving me... Like no effort at all. You're just like, I know I can't do this, so there, Jeff, deal with it. There's a vector. Tell me that ain't a vector. Okay, it's a vector. I don't know what the hell space it's in, right? That's the Cronenberg universe from Rick and Morty. Even the vectors got all freaky. Um, okay, when you're trying to do, we're going to be getting into trying to graph. Uh, 3D figures, and when you do that, a really good idea, and the book talks about this too, is making traces in like the XY plane, the XZ plane, YZ plane. Uh, so if I know that I have, for example, there was that one equation that was uh, like this here, and of course this one's easy because the cylinders are always easier than almost anything else, because once you get the shape down, you just repeat that shape. But a few too many people are just putting it in a circle lamp. But what plane does this live in? Basic, I mean, uh, uh, let me say tell you this. What is y equal to? Everything. Everything. That is correct. Not zero. Where does it say y must be zero? All it says that x and z must do this. So what must y do? Uh, there's no restriction on y. Y can do anything it wants to. So what we do is we do y equals zero trace. What is y equals zero the equation of? The xz plane. 
That's the equation of the xz plane is y equals zero. What's the equation of the x-axis in 2D? What's the equation of the x-axis? Holy shit. So what's the equation of the xz axis y equals zero? Because now I just add the z axis. Y is still zero if it goes straight out from there, right? Yeah. It's still zero all along this plane. Maybe, maybe. All right, all right. Uh, so then I would draw, so this is what I was saying, I was trying to do this. It's a radius three, right? But it's in the x, z plane. So it's gonna look elliptical to me because of the skewed natures. But I gotta think, I'm like looking this way would be a perfect circle, but it's gonna look like a, like an ellipse to me, sort of. Man, that's really horrible, but too bad for everybody. And then, that's about as good as it was the first time I did it. And, and then you're going, but don't just put a circle there without any showing of where, you know, what your, uh, um, uh, your, your, what am I trying to say? Your intercepts in each of these axes are, right? You want to show those intercepts. Show me some scale. You got to be at least as good as pre-calc. And if you're in my pre-calc class and you gave me a graph like this, well, what the freaking hell's that shit? Give me some scale, give me something, right? Uh, and then, of course, you just got to show that it continues in both directions around that y-axis forever. And the nice thing is, I mean, so you can give yourself, Wah -ha. Wah -ha. that's of captured. So if, it, if it's at least as good looking as that, which is not good looking, but I've got scale, I've got a trace drawn, and I've got the idea that it continues along the y-axis. And the beautiful thing is it asks you for this. Give a description. You feel like, oh, my God, I don't know if you'll see what I mean. Say, it's a circle on the XZ continued in both directions around the Y axis. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Now, that's what you meant. That's what I meant, right? I understand. Obviously, I understand that drawing in 3D is not an easy task. And there are many of you that do a much better job than me, and I am jealous. But, you know, I can paint. I just can't draw worth crap. What, the side of a barn? Yes, the side of a barn. I can paint the side of a barn. Um, okay. What else was I going to say? Oh, so here's my little spiel about Wolfram Alpha. I think the last time I tried to show you guys Wolfram Alpha, it didn't work. I had to download something. You don't get to see it. Oh, you, okay. First thing I want to show you is, uh, if I said plot Z equals Y in the YZ plane, what would it look like? It's Z equals Y. Yeah. It's, it's a one-to-one relationship. Yeah. So it's going to be like that. Now, now, what does that equation say about X? Yes, it says exactly that. The X axis is basically here, and X can be anything it wants to be. So what I've drawn so far is specifically when X equals... No, I've drawn what for x equal what? Very specifically. Where's the x-axis? Anywhere. Anywhere. No. It's the, it makes a plane. It's pointing out. It. It's got to be how related to these two axes. It's got to be perpendicular. It has to be. In general, it doesn't have to be. When I say x, y, z, I know I'm talking about a coordinate system where I've set 90 degree angles between everything. Here it is. So this is when x equals zero. X equal one would be that line floating here. X equal 2 would be that same line. So what's the collection of all these lines? It makes a plane. So right there you see uh, I did Y equals Z and this is the uh, I, I've got my Y Z axis, right? It just doesn't show us. Uh, right now I'm logged in so I can, I can turn this thing around. So I'm looking at it like this. Right? Now watch. This is the beautiful thing about the interacti interactivity about this. And I can just turn it and see, hey, it extends in both directions forever because X doesn't just have to be zero. X can be anything it wants to be. It just repeats this image forever. And again, we know this. How do you graph in one dimension? How do you graph X equals one? It's a point. It's a point. So now if I add another dimension, what does X equal one look like? It's everywhere where the point of X piece is one. The, one, the X piece of the point is one. So it's going to be one there, one there. It's going to be this. Now if I say in three dimensions, I can just extend that thing in that and that way. So now it's going to be a plane. It's just that same idea that we've known. Do it in one more dimension. So a point becomes a line. A line becomes a plane as they step up in dimensions. 
Thankfully, we only got to the third dimension in here normally. Uh, and just to show you, uh, you know, I was the major geek. When I was a little kid, I would play with freaking uh, calculators when people would come over the house or something. Uh, yes. Yeah, they, oh, you got a calculator? Let me play with it. It was the old school calculators where the, everything was red. All the numbers are red. And I don't know what I got out of that, but I just did it. Um, but you don't have to be that much of a weird geek. But if you sign up for Wolf of Alpha, you can just start playing around with shit. What the hell is that going to look like? In fact, before I even show you, <laughs> what do you think that's going to look like? I probably should show you too, but I'll think about it. What would z squared, what did I say it was? z squared equals uh, y squared plus x squared, right? Yeah. Why? I like it. So one way to look at it is to hold these as variables and let z be constants, right? So if z was 3, this would be a circle of radius 3. So you can think if z is 1, it's, it's, it's a height of 1 above the xy plane, and it's a circle of radius 1, and there's a circle of radius 2, 3, 4, 5. Is everybody cool with that? And of course at 0, it's a circle of radius Zero, and then the other side, it's negatives, but they get squared, so it's just the same thing again. So it's that. I don't know if you guys know about like the uh, the tying cone. That, uh, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking. Some of you guys know what I'm talking. Or just the infinite cone in both directions. That would be awesome. I have an infinite cone. Please fill it up with ice cream. Holy shit. Uh, so sure enough. Oh wait, wait. Before I do that, what if I do that with a different variable? What if I let x and z stay variables? But I let y be something like, what if y is 1? What the hell's that? A parabola. Because now you can say z squared minus x squared equals 1 squared, right? Perhaps, uh, hyperbola. So let, if I let y equal 2, y equals 3, that's still more and more hyperbolous. I like it. And I don't know if you guys realize, like, if I let y be 2, what would that do to the hyperbola? Do you guys? Are you at the point where you're able to... So this one would be... I am very quick... In the XZ plane. Where would my hyperbola sit? Who remembers? Uh-oh, uh, shit. Uh, On the X plane or the Z plane? Um, Which one has real intercepts? The Does that have real intercepts? Oh, no. No. So it must sit on the Z plane. On the Z axis. Sorry, did I say plane? Z axis. And it's going to be basically one away, right? You got that little box. Remember making that box? Yeah, the stupid thing. So it's like saying, now what happens if we make y2? So this is 4 now. I got to divide by 4 to make it 1 again. This pushes that box out. It's going to push that hyperbola up and away, right? Or, and down on the other side. Okay, keep that in mind. Do you see how I started to analyze this by doing, what did I do? I basically made traces. I let y be 1, and I thought about in that plane that I just said, in the plane y equals 1, what does it look like? In the plane y equals 2, what does it look like? In the plane z equals 1, it's a circle. In the plane z equals 3, it's a, it's a bigger circle. So you can get what I'm saying. That's how you start to computationally analyze a function so you can guess what the graph is going to look like. Now, we look at the graph. Where do we see these things? Obviously, oh, interactivity. Give it to me. Me. All right, so you can see the circles here, right? As z gets bigger, as I go up or down, as z gets bigger in magnitude, then the circle gets bigger because z controls the circle's radius. But what do you also see? What do you see here? Yeah, the, the hyperbola is there's this guy with its corresponding one on this side. That's the hyperbola as as I let y get bigger or x get bigger, then the corresponding hyperbola is getting further apart. I don't know if you guys... Yes. And of course it goes not just that way. Let me see if I can capture it. There. The parabola and hyperbola look very similar, but the curvature is very different, right? So this, like, this piece here goes with this piece here, right? Maybe if I look at it this way. Yeah. You see, not let me show me. Oh, well, too bad. You can see right in the middle, of course, is where everything's zero. It's just a point, the origin. I like it. Maybe... What would the absolute value of the All right, see, this is what I, this is, I don't know. What, how do you mean? How do you mean? Like if it was the absolute value of z squared equals the Well, absolute. that wouldn't do anything, right? 
Or no, or if you did like the absolute value, value of z, yeah. like that. Yeah. So you can imagine it's not gonna. Well, let's see what it says. We should have looked at what z equals that looks like first. Oh, poor little dude can't even do it. Oh, it doesn't want to do it for us. It's too bad. It can handle stuff like uh, the square root. I don't know why it can't handle absolute value. Oh, it's thinking. <laughs> Poor little Jude. All right. I know it can handle it over here. I think if it would have trouble with the... Is just not have enough computation time. I know I did this earlier. Oh well. Man. I want to make the point you can just play around with this thing, but if it's not going to let you play around, what's the point? Let's see. Z. Z equals x minus y. Well, what, does, what should that be? Z equals x minus y. Does somebody know what that would be? Just a triangle? Let's find out. Please plan it. Well, I told you already, it's a plane. <laughs> Let's try it. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's a plane. All right, so today we're going to talk about plane equations. We talked about line equations last time. Today we're going to talk about equations of planes. Um, and just to make sure you understand why, can somebody tell me how many independent variables are up there in that equation? How many independent variables? Yeah. Two. Because you can pick X and Y. You can pick, in fact, you can pick any two you want to, but the third one is determined then. Yeah. So how many degrees of freedom do you have? If you've taken statistics, you've heard that before. But two. So how many dimensions should the resultant thing have itself? One. Two. two. That's why a plane makes sense, right? Do you guys understand? Sort of. So the amount, the degrees of freedom you have corresponds to the amount of the dimensions. It's how many independent variables you can Now, now real quick. Now, now you got to be real careful. If I take one of the variables away, did I lose the degree of freedom? No, because now y can can be whatever it wants to be, x can be whatever it wants to be, but then z is determined. Do, do you guys understand? So I still have two degrees of freedom. This is still going to be a plane. In fact, I think this was a homework problem. Yeah, the contra plane. I haven't talked about you yet. All right, there you go. Cool. If you enable interactivity, you can look at it straight on in the uh, XZ plane and see that it is the line and it just repeats along the Y axis. All right, how are you feeling about that? Is it better? So please, dear God, you do have to graph stuff by hand, but what I'm telling you is if you do this, if you get Wolfram Alpha, I'm not saying you, I, I don't have any any part with the business. I don't make any money if you go and join it. Just saying, if you're in 281, I don't know how you can survive without this, to be honest. I mean. The, you can't do anything else where you can actually rotate the thing. And if you can't rotate it, you can't really get a feel for what it looks like. If you can only look at it from one angle, it doesn't mean shit. So the only, for that example where you said you uh, didn't lose the degree of freedom, you only don't lose the degree of freedom if you say that there's a Y plane included, right? Like in that equation, you only Oh yeah, a degree. system of equations would have to be right. given. But, but like in that equation, you would only have one degree of freedom. Because the other one's in flat. Well, the other one is not restricted. Right. So it's you, you you're free. To, what value can you pick your own values of y? Yes. But, totally. But, but you'd have to say that. It, well, I guess you do say because it's in three D. Three D. Exactly. If, if that was in two D. If it was in the xe plane, then it would be one. Okay. Because you're not. You, then you're not allowed to pick y because it doesn't exist. Yes. Can you do a sign field? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, so what? Do you have one in mind? Um. Not specifically. <laughs> so, all right. I mean, you, so in general, you could put whatever you want to in here. I mean, if you try something like uh, x equals sine y, let's see what it does with that. It couldn't even handle square root, so I have a bad feeling. Hey, look at that. There we go. So why does this not surprise? If I look at the xy axis, yeah, the xy plane, sorry. Then it's just going to look like a nice, if I can just get it to work with me. If I can just look at it, oh well, it's never going to be able to look at it straight on, am I? 
uh, it would just be a sign. And then it's just repeated forever in the missing dimension, right? So I'm looking at the XY plane, and the Z plane is coming in and out of the page. Is that is that cool? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, do you sign of Y plus Z? Right. Okay. This is the last request. Let's see what that does. But, and then, you know, beforehand, I should have said, what will this do? But, do you see what it's basically doing? What, what's, get out of there. What's happened now? I mean, can you see, I, I don't know if you remember what, what the other one looked like, but is what you say that that sine wave is on a diagonal? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. I like it. Because the inputs are not just one axis. Now it's a combination, and actually it is exactly at a 45-degree angle. So if you did y plus 2z, it would be at the angle that corresponds anyway. But you guys start to see. Some of you, hopefully at 281 level, you should be curious enough to come up with all kinds of shit to plug in there and just see what the hell happens. And the more you do that, and the more you stop yourself and say, why does that make sense, the more you'll understand how to analyze functions I give you. You'll see how things work, yes. The mobile version has the 3D plotting, but you can't rotate it. All right. And so it's almost like it, it's okay. It's better than nothing. Oh, yeah. But if you can't rotate it, you can't really see everything about it. It's just, it's, uh, yeah. And if you have Wolf, if you have a web assign, there are some images in the book that you can rotate, but you, don't, you can't control their functions. It's just whatever function they, they set up. But at least you can rotate them. Okay. That's my little... Pl uh, plug for Wolfram Alpha. Um, if you understand MATLAB, there's a terminal online. It's called uh, Tutorials Point. You can make 3D images. Yeah, and I, I haven't played around with like the 3D possibilities of Desmos. Anybody ever use Desmos? Yeah, it doesn't have it yet. I don't think so, yeah. I think they were talking about someday. In the but that would be this. This is actually really, really cool. This, yeah. this. Uh, if you've never heard of it, get into Desmos.com and just start playing around with it. It's so beautiful. It finds all these intersections quickly. It's, it's and insane. Sliders. Yeah, sliders. You can create your own sliders. Yeah, I like it. When I hear that, I hear. I think about the old show where they were cross hopping between dimensions. No sliders. Okay. Um, I'll stop. You remember the show? It's been off right. the air for so long. I know, but I'm old. Give me a break. Um, okay, so let's get back into where we left off. Let's remember what we've done so far. So last time we talked about lines, and we did, we talked about lines the first day, and we talked about lines earlier today. Not Mike lines, but you know, did I make the same joke last time? I think so. <laughs> Mike. Uh, so for the equation of a line, just to remind you guys. Uh, we had this up here earlier. It looks like this in vector form, right? And I think this book, what did they use for the V A B C uh, good. Is that right? Yes. Where are we at? What does what say? I'm sorry. Oh. Equation of a line. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I put the Q up there also. So I'll write like a uh, function is this function, equation is that, okay, it's just shorthand, so equation, I just went a little crazy, of the line is this, that's the vector equation of the line. If I call V A, B, C, so let's talk about the three dimensions, and uh, R is my result and like somebody said last time, it holds all of the variables in it at once. So what would R, the general R vector, look like? It's going to point to any point on the line. So what would it look like? What, give me a point on this line in 3D. What's that point right there? Okay, good. So R is going to be X, Y, and Z. I knew we'd get there. So what's R not going to look like? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Poor dude. <laughs> should say something. I was like, I can't see you. You probably can't see this. All right. I'm sorry, go ahead. 
R is X, Y, Z, R naught is X naught, Y naught, Z naught. And so you can recapture those, uh, the other versions of this equation by just plugging those specific things in. You guys with me? So last time we plugged those things in, we got X equals X naught plus T A. Is that, do you guys see that? Is that cool? Just equate the X components. You get similar things for the Y and the Z. Does this sound familiar? And then we did the, uh, we solve for T and we get X minus X naught over A, A equals Y minus Y naught over B equals Z minus Z naught over C. That's the symmetric equations of a line. I like it. Cool. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Um, there was a problem in the homework where it said something like, uh, y equals 5, z equals 3, and this by itself is a what in 3D? A plane. A plane. That is also a plane. If I give you these in a system of equations, that defines a line. And if you think about it, you can always break it down to this. If I give you both of these, how many degrees of freedom do you have in 3D left? One. What's a one-dimensional thing in 3D? A line. Two-dimensional thing, and now I've got Y is 5, but X and Z are whatever I want them to be, and that's a 2D object, and that is a plane. Do you guys get what I'm saying? All right, cool. You can always think about it like that to figure out, what the, is it a plane or a line that I'm dealing with? I like it. Okay, maybe. All right, so this is just catching us up to where we were last time. And in fact, I think we got a little bit into uh, planes, if I remember correctly. And I think the last thing I did, I was trying to say, if I wanted to define some plane sitting in space, I want to define it. I can't just use one line. Because how many planes is one line? If this is a line, how many planes does that lie on? How many planes does that lie on? You can do it, you can do it. So if I give you one point, how many lines does that point lie on? Infinite. Infinite number. If you give you one line, how many planes does that lie on? Infinite. Yeah, because it could lie on this plane, that 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 plane. And every time I make a little step, I've just gone through an infinite number of planes. Does everybody cool that? How many planes are there from here to there? Infinity. Infinite number. So I've already got an infinite number. Holy shit. Don't think too much about it. It's not infinite, 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 but it's just an infinite number. Right? Are we are you understanding so far? Any line sits on an infinite number of planes because there's an infinite number of planes that contain that line. Think about, I know this is old school, but Rolodex, you know a Rolodex? What else would be like that nowadays? I don't know. Uh, a, a, a notebook. When you flip the page, doesn't the spine of the notebook go through every, it's on that, it's, it's like in that plane, every time it turns, it's a new plane, new plane, new plane, new plane. Oh, there's an infinite number of planes that that line lies on. Cool. So, if I wanted to define a plane, what do I need? Plane. Yes, that's jumping. Yeah. So the easiest way to define a plane is by a line or a vector that is perpendicular to that plane. Because if I say this is perpendicular to a plane, there's only one place that plane could be, right there. Does that, do you understand? Yes. And it goes in all directions. Don't tell me, well, that's different. No, it's the same plane, right? It's infinite in all directions. All that, you know. All right, you guys, that's the idea. If I can get a normal, well, this is what we call a normal vector. A normal vector is one that is perpendicular to a, a plane, right? So if you're taking physics, you know, the normal force, same idea, right? The reason you have spoilers on a car is to decrease your normal force and your friction decreases, and you still drive like an idiot, but oh. <laughs> Doesn't do anything to decrease that. Uh, I didn't mean anything personal by that. I don't know if any of you have spoilers. So, right. well, let's see where am I? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. Um, so really, the idea is if I have a normal to a to a plane. So let's say uh, obviously I'm going to call it an become a normal. That doesn't define, by itself, that's not exactly good enough because the thing that I was sort of 
I was saying like the point, the butt end of this is a point on the plane. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So I do need something beyond just the normal. I need a point on the plane. Because this vector technically extends in all directions everywhere. So there's an infinite number. But if I give it a point on the plane and a normal, that defines that plane specifically. I like it. Cool. Uh, if you're following along in the book, we're at the top of page 867. So if I have, so sort of like we did with uh, a line, I want to come up with an equation, a vector equation of a plane, and then we're going to kind of plug some stuff into it and make it a more general, not a vector equation. So we have a vector equation of a line, and then we have these parametric equations of a line that weren't written as a vector. So that's what I'm going to work towards. I want to start with a vector definition of a plane. So let's say I have a plane sitting here. Yeah. And I want something that will point to every uh, point in that plane. So I'm going to call that R, remarkably enough. And then I have something that's pointing to a specific given point in that plane. I'm going to call that R. Now, this sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Totally. <laughs> So the, the idea is, if the normal is perpendicular <coughs> to this plane, and, and let me see now, what, what's a vector in that plane using what we've got in the plane? What do I know that's in the plane that's up here on the board right now? What's in the plane? It's a really weird question. X, Y, Z is in the plane? Yeah. 